Africa is splitting apart right before our eyes. A crack, as long as the entire length of Singapore Island has appeared. And more fissures are showing up, widening every day. The question now isn't whether Africa will split, but how long it will take for that to happen. Scientists have already named the new continent, drawn its coastlines, and even calculated the potential economic benefits it could bring. But will things really go as planned? And will humans even be around to see it happen? Let's take a closer look. In 2005, in the Afar Desert, the hottest desert in the world, located in Ethiopia, the ground suddenly tore open. A crack stretching 35 to 37 miles appeared in just 10 days. And in some places, the ground split as wide as 26 feet in just three seconds. At first, the local people thought heavy rain was to blame, but geologists quickly disagreed. No rainstorm on Earth could create a cut as long as the distance from New York City to Newark in less than two weeks. What was happening in Afar wasn't a normal natural disaster, but the splitting a part of three massive tectonic plates, Nubian, Somali, and Arabian. And for the first time in history, the INSAR satellite captured footage of a continent splitting apart right before our eyes, but it didn't stop there. The crack has continued to widen at a rate of about half an inch per year. The speed at which your toenails grow. That sounds tiny, but for a massive continent, it's a scary pace. Professor Ken McDonald has even warned that in one to five million years, the Indian Ocean will flood in, creating a new ocean as deep as the Atlantic. They've already named the new continent Nubian. Again, the question isn't if Africa will split, but how long it will take. Maybe it was 2018 when the next big crack appeared in Kenya. Right in the middle of the Maimahuna Rock Road, west of Nairobi, a massive fissure opened up. This was just a regular road, used by trucks and buses every day. But in March that year, the ground suddenly split open, creating a chasm nearly 50 feet deep, about the height of a five-story building, over 65 feet wide and stretching for miles. It swallowed up part of the road and brought traffic in Kenya to a standstill, as if the city had been cut in half. Locals said that in just a few minutes, the once flat ground suddenly cracked open like a cookie being snapped in two. Of course, a crack that big can't appear overnight. Some reports pointed out that there were already long, straight structures in the area that perfectly matched the direction of the fissure. You can see this feature clearly. It cuts across the entire landscape. At least that's what some authors claim. Geologists around the world agree that there was already an underground crack here. It had just been ignored for a long time because it was filled with volcanic ash. That ash came from ancient eruptions, so much so that no one suspected anything unusual was happening underground. Then heavy rain came. The rainwater soaked in, washing away the soft ash deep below, creating a huge empty space. When the ground above lost its support, it collapsed in just a few minutes. One local man even saw the crack open right through his house. He barely had time to grab a few belongings before watching his home sink into the ground as if it had been swallowed up. Scientifically, this is called subsidence, not tectonic movement. Overall, what happened can be called a tragedy, affecting the lives of many ordinary people. For example, to this day, it's still unclear whether the new railway in the area is safe and whether some trains might one day sink into the ground along with houses. But after the geologists, who was happiest about this news? That's right, the media. Eye-catching headlines popped up everywhere. Africa is splitting apart right before our eyes. Who wouldn't be startled by that? Especially since just 13 years earlier, Ethiopia had witnessed the ground splitting open. In the end, the road was filled in with rock and concrete and reopened just a few weeks later, as if the continental split disaster had never happened. Still, the 2018 fissure made the world take a closer look at the East African rift system. Africa really is being pulled apart at a rate of about one-tenth to one-quarter of an inch per year. And this is the real story, a continent truly splitting in two. One thing we all know, the earth beneath our feet is always moving. Right now, as you watch this video at night while you sleep, 
When you go to work or school, literally every moment, the ground under us never stands still. Even as you watch this video, sleep, work, or just walk across your living room, everything below is constantly shifting. The continents we think of as solid are actually just thin plates, floating and rubbing against each other on top of a boiling ocean of molten rock. This constant movement is what has created everything on the Earth's surface. When plates slide past each other, they create giant faults, like the San Andreas, where just a few inches of movement per year can cause earthquakes that leave millions living in constant fear. When plates collide, they push the ground up, like India crashing into Eurasia and raising the Himalayas by about half an inch per year, about as fast as you sharpen a pencil. The problem is, for centuries, scientists thought Africa was a single, stable, unbroken block. But since the 1970s, everything changed. Seismic, GPS, and satellite data revealed something no one had dared to say before. Africa is splitting in two, slowly but surely, along a fault line more than 2,100 miles long, the East African Rift System, from the Red Sea to Mozambique. To put that in perspective, if you laid the rift across Europe, it would stretch from Spain to Finland, crossing dozens of countries. It's such a huge tear, it's hard to believe it exists right here on Earth. What we call the Great Rift Valley is actually just the exposed part of this tear. All of Africa's Great Lakes, Tanganyika, Malawi, Albert, lie along the rift, like drops of water collecting in a long crack on a piece of glass. Alongside are countless steep cliffs, valleys hundreds of feet deep, and fierce volcanoes like Erta Ele where a lava lake over 10 miles long lights up the night sky. The most shocking thing is that the East African Rift has been active for 25 million years, but the part of the continent that's split off so far is still extremely small. If you go back to when this rift began, you'd see a very different Earth. Dinosaurs had been gone for about 40 million years, but the animals we know today were just starting to appear. Primitive dogs, ancient bears, early hyenas, and saber-toothed cats had just evolved. The ancestors of elephants were moving from Africa to Eurasia. And humans? We didn't exist yet. The first Homo ancestors appeared only about 2 million years ago, which is very late in this timeline. If 25 million years is hard to imagine, remember that human civilization is only about 6,000 years old. So the African split has been going on for 4,000 times longer than all of human history. We really are just a blink of an eye in the planet's lifetime. So how do people know about movements too slow to see? The answer is satellites. It wasn't humans who discovered Africa was splitting, but INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar. This system sends waves down to the ground and measures movement as small as a fraction of an inch, accuracy no human sense can match. INSAR directly recorded the 2005 Ethiopia event and confirmed the ground was splitting in real time. Even more surprising, satellite data didn't just show nail growth speed movement, but also sudden tectonic jolts. In Dabahu, some cracks widened 26 feet in just a few seconds, as if the ground had been sliced by a giant knife. Today, the idea that Africa is splitting isn't just a theory, it's measured by GPS. Hundreds of satellite stations record every millimeter of movement. The Nubian and Somali plates are moving apart by about one-tenth to two-tenths of an inch per year. That sounds tiny, but add it up over 1,000, 10,000, or a million years. And you'll see it's enough to open a new ocean, just like the Atlantic formed when Gondwana broke up. If you look at a world map, Africa's and South America's coastlines still fit together like two Lego pieces. So what's happening underneath? Beneath Kenya and Ethiopia, the Earth's mantle is releasing huge amounts of heat, causing the lithosphere to bulge, stretch, and thin out. As the crust weakens, magma rises up, just like water squirting out when you squeeze a bottle. That's why this area is a natural laboratory for volcanoes and earthquakes. In recent decades, Kenya, Ethiopia, and Tanzania have recorded many small quakes, like knocks on the door, warning that the splitting process is still underway little by little. Many things we see as natural wonders are actually scars from this crack. Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest peak, exists because of the rift. 
Mount Kenya, and giant lakes like Victoria, Tanganyika, or Malawi are all products of the Rift Valley. Lake Tanganyika alone is nearly one mile deep, deep enough to drop the Shanghai Tower in and still not hit the bottom. If what's happening in East Africa continues for millions of years, Earth's map will change so much you might not recognize it. Current geological models suggest the Somali plate will eventually break off from the rest of Africa, forming a new super island about the size of Madagascar or even New Zealand. Imagine a new island nation made up of Somalia, half of Ethiopia, part of Kenya and Tanzania. Drifting away from the mother continent like a Lego piece snapping off. So what happens next? In about 200 million years, according to some geological models, this Somali landmass could drift southeast and merge with India and Madagascar to form a new supercontinent. Picture it like putting together three giant puzzle pieces after hundreds of millions of years of slow movement beneath the ocean. When the Horn of Africa hits India's west coast, a massive geological reaction will occur. The Malabar coast will be pushed up like a bulldozer, folding sediment layers into a new mountain range called Somaya. Some models even predict Somaya could be as high or higher than the early Himalayas. If that happens, Mumbai will sit at the foot of this range, just like New Delhi is at the foot of the Himalayas today. That's not all. The Seychelles and Lakshadweep Islands, now sitting in the Indian Ocean, could get caught in the collision, joining the Malabar sediments and being pushed up into a mountain range about five miles high. The belief that coral reefs are just underwater rocks will disappear, because the opposite has been proven. In Nevada, coral reefs 520 million years old have been found on mountaintops. And in Texas, ancient coral layers are found high up as well. This shows the ocean floor can become mountain peaks, given enough time and pressure. Of course, all these predictions are just models based on current data. If things turn out differently in 200 million years, it won't be geology's fault. It'll just mean we predicted too soon. To understand what might happen to the future Somali super island, just look at Madagascar a perfect example Earth has already created. About 150 million years ago, Madagascar split off from Africa along with India. By 90 million years ago, this landmass passed over a magma hotspot and split again, becoming Madagascar and India. From then on, Madagascar was completely isolated from the rest of the world. This isolation turned it into a natural evolution lab. 90% of the island's species exist nowhere else, from lemurs, and leaf-tailed geckos to the strange baobab trees unique to Madagascar. So imagine if a future Somali island splits off and stays isolated for tens of millions of years, could it become a completely different world too? Just look at this example to see how time can change life. 200 million years ago, the ancestor of today's elephants was a dicynodont, a creature half turtle, half rhino, with a beak and two strange tusks. Looking at it, you'd never guess it was related to African elephants. The splitting of Africa, an event that sounds dangerous with earthquakes and volcanoes, right? But if you think positively, it could bring unexpected benefits to many landlocked countries. If the Rift Valley keeps widening and a new ocean forms, countries now stuck inland like Rwanda, Uganda, Burundi, Malawi, Zambia, or the Democratic Republic of Congo could become coastal nations. Sounds crazy, but geologically, it's totally possible. Imagine Rwanda, a tiny country landlocked in Africa, could have its own coastline, just like Kenya or Mozambique. What costs billions of dollars today for railroads and dry ports could suddenly become a natural gift. If this happens, those countries could build seaports, open direct trade routes with the world, and dramatically cut logistics costs. A new ocean would also mean fishing, beach tourism, and shipping could become key economic sectors. Something landlocked nations have never had a chance at. Of course, none of these benefits will come in our lifetime, or even our children's. But of course, Africa isn't the only plate on Earth. If Africa can split, other places can too. The clearest example is the Indian plate, where geologists believe splitting is happening in a totally different way. 
Not side to side like in East Africa, but splitting vertically, deep underground. Two massive rock layers, each nearly 60 miles thick, are thought to be starting to pull apart like a cake being sliced from the inside. Meanwhile, the surface of the Indian plate is still racing north at the fastest rate in the world, about half to nearly one mile per year. Imagine an entire continent moving faster than your fingernails grow. That constant collision over tens of millions of years is why the Himalayas are still rising by millimeters each year. Think about it. A mountain almost 29,000 feet high that's still growing. That's living proof our planet never stops moving. And India isn't the only example. In North America, the San Andreas Fault is quietly shifting, pushing California northward by inches each year. In Iceland, the Eurasian and North American plates are splitting apart right under the ground, making the island grow little by little every year. See the pattern? Every place on Earth is moving. It's just too slow for us to feel. Looking back at the whole story, like one thing is undeniable. Plate movement is the oldest process on the planet. So slow that humans can barely sense it, but strong enough to rip a continent apart. But this story makes us see Earth differently. Our planet is always alive, always breathing, and always changing. If you find this topic interesting, leave a comment, ask any questions you want to know more about, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see the next episodes. See you in the next video.